So today I'm looking at the center of a triangle, and there are many different kinds of centers. This is one of them, and I'm going to start by carefully drawing a cute scalene triangle. Now you can do this with any triangle. If you use an obtuse triangle, you'll find that the center that you end up may not be something that you'd like to think of as a center. So what we're going to do uh, on this construction is find the three altitudes of this triangle. So I want the line segment that goes from this vertex to the opposite side perpendicular to it, from this vertex to its opposite side perpendicular, and this vertex to its opposite side also perpendicular. And because this is almost a right triangle that I've drawn, I am going to make my life a little easier and extend these sides just a scooch. I'll see why that is in a moment. If you didn't have the foresight to do this, you would discover a need to do it eventually. So this is the triangle we're interested in. So I'm going to start by doing the perpendicular to a line through a point not on the line. This is the line I'm doing the perpendicular to. This is the point that's not on the line. It's this vertex. I'm going to put my compass point there and swing an arc. It passes through the opposite side in two places. And that's why I had to extend that opposite side. I wanted to have a little more room to work with here. So I just made it longer. That's OK. Do the same thing for this vertex opposite side two places, and then I'll go up to this vertex. Swing an arc that crosses in two places. And again, this is nice that I've got that extended. I can make a nice broad arc. That'll be very helpful. So once I've got these arcs swung out here, I'm going to locate a second point for each of these altitudes. So I'm going to put my compass point where the arc intersected the side, arc, Go to the other side of this, another arc. So if I construct a line through that intersection back to the original vertex opposite this side, I should have an altitude. So this is perpendicular. Not a perpendicular bisector, just a perpendicular. And I'll do the same thing for this one. Intersection. Line through that intersection back up to the original vertex. Perpendicular. And then make it a pair of intersections for this arc. Right. From this vertex. Intersection from the opposite side here. All right, look at that. All three of these altitudes met at one point. That is a point of concurrency. Three or more points. At single, uh, three or more lines that cross at a single point. This is known as the orthocenter. Why orthocenter? Now, in the circumcenter and in center, I could rationalize a way of constructing a circle that made some sense. Orthocenter doesn't seem to have that feature. The meaning of the name orthocenter, ortho, um, means uh, vertical or upright, uh, often used in a context of upright relative to something horizontal, or in other words, perpendicular. So perpendicular and ortho are related terms. Um, another term you might see in mathematics is orthogonal, which also has a sense of perpendicularity. So 
these altitudes are perpendicular to the sides, hence the ortho and orthocenter. So again, another type of center for triangle. If this had been an obtuse triangle, and almost there, we're not quite even a right triangle, but if it had been obtuse here, what happens is these altitudes move outside of the triangle, those two move outside. You still have a point of concurrency, but the point of concurrency is actually outside the triangle. So in that case, it's a center of the triangle, an orthocenter, that isn't even inside the triangle. There you have orthocenter.